Tonight on Movie Drome, a great treat in the form of a long unseen spaghetti western, Django, starring Franco Nero, made in 1966. It was directed by Sergio Corbucci, who you may recall was the director of Big Silence, another missing film premiered on Movie Drome. Big Silence was the first western I ever saw where the bad guys absolutely win. It was so troubling the producers actually had Corbucci shoot a happy ending too, which played in certain territories where the sad one was perceived as being too much. Django isn't quite as doom-laden as The Big Silence, but it comes close. It also benefits from an even madder plot and some extraordinary sets and costumes by Giancarlo Simi, who designed all of Sergio Leone's films. Big Silence took place in the snow. Django is set entirely in a sea of mud. It's basically a rip-off of A Fistful of Dollars, which was, of course, a rip-off of Yojimbo, the classic Kurosawa movie about a paid assassin who brings destruction on a town controlled by two groups of bandits. Rumor hath it that Yojimbo is currently being remade by Abel Ferrara, director of Bad Lieutenant. To my mind, Django is the very best of the Yojimbo imitations. It really goes for it, far more than A Fistful of Dollars does. It's more violent, more insane, more exotic, with a much higher body count and far more ingenious cruelty. Check out the scene where the unpalatable curate has his ear cut off and is then made to eat it. Such scenes were favorites of Corbucci, who was forever cutting off scalps, tongues, and hands in his Jacobean spaghetti westerns. He died a couple of years ago, having made approximately 30 comedies, Roman sword and sandal picks, and demented westerns such as Django. Django was a very influential movie. In Italy, it was far more popular than the Clint Eastwood films. It made Franco Nero an international star and spawned at least 25 sequels. The last one, Django's Great Return, also starred Franco Nero and was released in 1990. Django was also remade unofficially last year by the American Robert Rodriguez. He called his version El Mariachi. For a long time, there was a rumor that Django had been banned by the British Board of Film Censors. I'm not entirely sure that this was true, but certainly the film never received a cinema release in Britain. Tonight in Movie Drum, it gets its first public screening on these shores. The reason given for its censorship problems was its violence, but by contemporary standards, say those of the average Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, the film is really pretty mild. The violence is exorbitant, improbable, and highly stylized. You may recall the great Jamaican movie, The Harder They Come, in which Jimmy Cliff goes to see Django at the Rialto Cinema. The montage of falling bodies and massacred Ku Klux Klansmen impresses him so much that he imagines he is Django in the shootout at the end. Joe Strummer actually wrote a reggae song called Don't Tango with Django in honor of these two influential films. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only spaghetti western that wasn't made in the widescreen technoscope format. So what you're seeing tonight is more or less the full frame without the edges cut off. They've also dubbed Franco Nero with a Clint Eastwood type voice. But he's a much more interesting character than Eastwood's man with no name. Clad in his union colors, dragging his saddle and his favorite coffin into a Confederate dominated, utterly decrepit border town. The film was shot at Elios Film Studios outside Rome. It's the same set as they use for Big Silence, minus the fake snow. The cameraman was Enzo Barboni, who went on to direct the Terence Hill, Bud Spencer, Trinity films under the pseudonym of E.B. Clutcher. As to where the name Django comes from, it appears to be a sick joke on the part of Corbucci and his screenwriter brother Bruno. Django Reinhardt was a famous jazz guitar player, a member of Le Hot Club de Paris, who achieved legendary status despite lacking several fingers on one hand. How does that tie in with our Django? Well, you'll have to see the film.